Today, I'm going to show you how to use Inkscape's Bezier Open tool. Now, this is the tool needed when creating professional grade data figures, illustrations, logos, and much more. So this is one of the most important skills to have for your graphic work. Now, at first, the Bezier Open tool might seem a little bit intimidating or hard to grasp, but it's simple once you understand the basic principles and logic behind it. So I created this free guide to help you gradually get familiar with the Bezier Open tool until you are comfortable enough to use it on your own. You'll find a link in the video description to download the free Inkscape file. This guide introduces or reminds you of key features, shortcuts, and methods for working with the Bezier Open tool. The techniques learned here applies for almost all vector graphic programs, from Illustrator to CorelDRAW, and much more. To begin, let's click on the Bezier tool, which can be found here on the Tools bar to activate it. Going up to the Tools control bar, let us look at the different options of the Bezier Open tool. Under User Mode, we can select to create a regular Bezier path, a spiral path, B spline path, sequence of straight line segments, paraxial line segments, and we can adjust the shape of the new path drawn or even scale it. Now we're gonna stay with the regular Bezier path as this is the most widely used and because it is also similar to both the widely used pen tool and curvature tool of Adobe Illustrator. The Bezier tool allows you to create paths which are connected by control points. For the first half of this sheet, we'll create geometric shapes made from open paths meaning they do not close to form a shape. Some objects like triangles, squares, pentagons, or hexagons are made of closed paths. Up here, I made reference objects we wanna use to draw and show you where to place your control points to draw the objects below. However, it becomes complicated with curves. And for those up here, I made reference objects. And below, I've shown some guides indicating where to place your control points or arrows showing how far to pull in order to create those specific shapes. And by the way, the shapes you draw on the guides don't need to be perfect. Just try to be as precise as you can. In real life, you can later use handles to adjust how your curves look. The whole aim here is to get some practice on where to place and pull around anchor points. This way, you have a reference to fall back on and practice till you become proficient. Now, what is the Bezier tool? Simply put, it allows you to create a line between two or more points. This line could be straight, as here, but later we'll also see curvatures. Now let us come to the straight line. I want you to click the left mouse button on the first anchor point and release. Then drag the line out towards the next anchor point and double click. Now, we notice the path is anchored to the point as we drag. Two other ways to end the line will be by clicking once and either using the Enter or Spacebar key. Now, you may wonder why we see no line. With the line selected, simply come here below to the left, right click and left click to give the line a thickness of say three millimeters. Alternatively, you could have used the fill and stroke dialog as seen in previous videos. 
Now, you can also click on a first point and hold Control on PC or Command on Mac and pull out to create a straight line that snaps to angles with increments of 15 degrees as you move the mouse up and down. Now, let's move to the next shape. So I'm going to start at the bottom here and click to create an anchor point. Then I'm gonna go to connect it to this corner up here. And from here, I'll move to the next point here below and double click when I'm done. Now we can move to the next closed shapes and repeat the process. But this time around, We'll connect all the points and make the path to close. You can start wherever you want and simply click your way on the anchor point positions till you connect the beginning of the path to the end. Now, when you come to the end, you see this little red square right here next to my cursor. This indicates that I'm about to connect the last point and close the path. For a closed path, a simple click ends the process. Now, using the same procedure, I want you to simply go ahead and draw closed paths for the square, pentagon, and hexagon. Once you've reached the beginning of the path and seen the red square prompting you to end the path, Click once and change the stroke width to a value of your choice. The stage was straightforward. Let us now move to curved paths. These are also called Bezier curves. Up here, I made reference objects we want to draw. And below, I have some guides indicating where to place your control points or arrows that show how far to pull in order to create these specific objects. Now let us start with this single curve. I'm going to create a starting point on this end here. Then I'm going to release the mouse button and drag the mouse to the middle. Next, I'll click, hold down the mouse button and pull towards the end of this arrow here. This fixes the line to the anchor point and gives us handles that determine the direction of the curve. Next, I'll release and take the mouse to the anchor point and double click. Now, let us move to the next one. I'll click and hold while dragging the mouse towards the end of the arrow. Then I'll release the mouse button, move towards the next anchor, and repeat the process. Once I'm done, I'll click on the space bar or the enter key. Now I'll move to the next one. Click and hold. Now, if I only drag my mouse cursor, I can rotate the handle around the starting anchor. Again, if I hold control, I will be able to drag the handle in a perfect vertical or horizontal line, or in different angles. So I am going to drag this handle up to this guide while pressing the control key and pulling right to the end of the guiding arrow. I'll release the mouse button and come to this end and repeat the process in the opposite direction. Again, hold control, Press the mouse button and drag the handle in a perfect vertical line. Now, I want to quickly repeat what we've done on the next page. Once done, change the line width to 3 millimeters. And you see it is way, way easy to use the Bezier or Pen tool. The next object is a little bit tricky. It has a curve followed by a line segment, which is then followed by another curve. In principle, while drawing such objects, to change an unfinished segment from a curve to a line, we could use Shift plus L. And to change an unfinished segment from a line to a curve, 
will use shift plus u. I have seen similar functions in Illustrator working with alt. However, it was difficult for me to reproduce that here. Now, using a workaround, this takes us to a new technique in Inkscape. First, let us draw the two half spheres as we have learned before. After drawing them, select both and give them a width of 3 mm so that we see them better. Now, select both shapes and press on the Note tool or use the keyboard shortcut N. Select the two closest nodes and you'll see new functions in the tools control bar. I can now come up here and select Join selected nodes with a new segment. We now see that the two objects have been joined with a new segment. While here, I want you to carefully mouse over all the other functions and see the scores of things you can do. On the right, you see Show Bezier Handles for selected nodes is presently on for me. Now, if you have that off for whatever reason, you'll see things differently. I have videos showing how to use these functions elsewhere. Links in the description. So let us move to the next shapes. In real life, you have very irregular shapes. In order to trace this, it helps thinking of the shape as having metaphoric hills and valleys. And if you looked carefully, you would have noticed the anchor points have been placed on the hills and valleys. So I'll click the first anchor point, press Ctrl on PC or Command on Mac, and drag towards the tip of the arrow. Then release the mouse. And let us repeat this for the next note. Click and hold. Press on Ctrl or Command, and hold, then pull. And we can repeat this for the next note, and then the next one, and so on. And when we are done with the last note, we hit the space bar to end the path. Now that we've learned that, let us go to this shape that looks like the base of a guitar. Again, we would have the notes placed on the metaphoric hilltops and valleys. And each time we will click, press and hold Ctrl for PC or Command for Mac and pull. We would repeat this process till we form a closed path by placing the point back on the origin and pulling. Now, thank you for watching. You can watch some of my videos by clicking here on the end screen or subscribe to be notified of the next video. I'll catch you there.